Good morning everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a throwback tag and I'm going to drill. So come along and drill with me. Grab your diamond painting and let's go. Before we start, I just wanted to show you my setup. So here is the work in progress at the moment. As you can see, it's about two thirds of the way done and I have most of this section completed. So we're going to finish that up and keep going and see how far we can get today. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a long video, but we'll see. Also, I'm in pajamas and a night robe, so don't judge me, please. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm going to scoot you closer so that you can see the canvas and I'll talk to you in a second. Okay, so now that I've got all the fiddling out of the way, I'm going to choose the first color. I'll just scoot in my chair here. So I'm going to start with the J's, which are 902. So before we get into the tag, I just wanted to give you a few updates. Um, we Let me talk about the painting first. I've never had a popping drill problem before until now. And this has just been really, really difficult to work with. I am very carefully selecting which drills to use on the project, making sure that I try my hardest to only pick really, really good ones. But unfortunately, either I'm not doing a great job because I tend to work on this at night in the living room and I can't see exactly what the drills look like all the time um, or something. Or maybe it's, it's not me, maybe it's something else. But anyway, they keep popping up and you know they're, they're too tight together is what I mean. So I have, now I'll show you, I'll show you when it's finished it shouldn't be too much longer. I only have this week to finish it. Um, but it, it's got a lot of trash. Um, so I guess there must have been, I mean, my conspiracy theory is that there was a really bad manufacturing boom. Well, I wouldn't call it a bad one, but you know, the craft really took off this summer. And I think Maybe that had something to do with it, why the quality went down a lot. So they just couldn't keep up with demand there for a while. And until we started complaining and, you know, saying that we want to refunds and stuff, they, they wouldn't change anything. Now, I've mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. I talked to the seller and I'll put in a picture here and... I talked to this seller and they told me to only place the best drills and if I run out of drills they would replace them. Thing is is that if you're doing this as a gift for somebody then you don't have the time to wait for them to send you better drills. So that's why a lot of people on the Facebook groups I've seen have been going and buying a set of round and square DMC, you know, drills of, uh, let me, so people on Facebook groups that I've seen have gone and ordered complete sets of all 477 colors in round or square or both, just to kind of keep up and make sure that they have extras in this kind of situation because as you know and it might be true for you uh, if you don't diamond paint well I don't know why you're here maybe it's just fascinating but if you've worked on a few projects then you would know that you know running out is a is a very easy thing to do so you'd hope that they'd give you enough overage that you wouldn't run out 
And I always get really nervous when I start throwing them away because if they're, if they're gifts for people, you can't wait for the seller to send you new drills. It's just not possible. So just like I did with my Sherlock Holmes one, I was, I was thinking, well, I could always order from Etsy or something like that um, and get this done. But like literally I have less than a week. I have four days to finish this painting. So that's why I'm here with you at 9 a.m. <laughs> in my bathrobe doing this painting. So speaking of, let me get a coffee. <laughs> It's too early. <laughs> Excuse me. So, Sherlock Holmes, custom from AZQSD or AZQSD store on AliExpress. So, the one color 317 that I was given were all misshapen drills. They were all clumped together. And a few people who commented on the video were saying, you know, oh, use a pill crusher. I understand that, but they were very soft and they didn't have any sparkle to them. It was really hard to show on camera what I was talking about, which is why I went ahead and ordered them online. Now, I went to this store called Stitches to Stones. It turns out that they order their drills from China, so you have to wait just as long as you would wait um, for the seller to send you the drills. So I don't really recommend that if you're in a rush, whereas I've heard that Etsy is really, really good and they ship out really quickly, but then again, I'm not in the States, so. Um, I did join a Got Diamonds group, Got Diamonds UK, it's on Facebook. And it's really helpful if you're stuck for drills as well. And it's kind of like a give and take kind of, or not a give and take, but a, you know what I mean. You reciprocate. If you give drills, someone will give drills to you. Um, so I joined one of those groups, but I haven't used them yet. I thought about it. Now I'm going to move to the explanation point, explanation mark, 938. Here we go. See, I have them in the little bag with the smaller bags inside. So if it's a lot of drills, I can just cut the bag open and I have my extra from the last one inside. And if you can hear that noise in the background, that's rain. Um, it just started pouring. <laughs> my poor chickens, they must have really wet feet. Um, okay. So, what else do I want to talk about? So, I, I, got, I got Sherlock Holmes finished. It looks fantastic. I will keep you updated and show you the final product once it's framed. But I will have that custom framed because it's a gift and it's kind of like the big gift of the year. So, my plan is to go to Michael's and have it framed and matted and everything. So that's the idea and the plan for that, but I'll let you know if that changes. So let me take some more coffee. <laughs> so I'm going to be leaving my house on Friday night, and it is currently Monday morning. So I have five days left before I'm going to the States to see my family on holiday. And I'm really, really excited. It's gonna be amazing, but I'm also really nervous and I can tell my body is nervous. It's kind of like a, well, it was a subconscious thing there for a few days, but now it's actually manifested to the stage where I can see it and feel it in myself. I woke up this morning with a really upset stomach do you see that, Jay? I'm just going to put an explanation park. Moin, bleh, bleh. <laughs> I'm going to put 938 on it because I 
I just can't be bothered to go back. That's the fun thing about diamond painting. You don't have to follow the rules. There are no police. Like Ella said, there's no diamond painting police. You do what you want. Which reminds me, I'm gonna change one of those deer's faces because it just looks kind of weird. But I'll show you that if I remember later on. Um, or I'll put a picture here in editing. <laughs> That's the fun thing about editing. I can do it while I'm at work because for a few hours during the night, um, I'm, I have to man the front desk at the gym. Uh, and depending on the day, it, it can be really, really slow. So I can put in one earpiece of my headphones and I can work on editing. So I'm really, really lucky to have that time <laughs> that no one minds, no one that I work for minds, so I haven't told them what I'm doing, but they don't mind. Um, it's better than internet shopping. <laughs> oh, internet shopping. Okay, <laughs> speaking of that, let me pick another color. Uh, will we go for a light one? Let's go for the N's because they're the brightest. N is 3823. This cream color okay so internet shopping so as you know yesterday was 11 11 and everybody in China is having massive deals because they're having their holidays and 11 11 in Korea and Japan is like Paki slash Pepero day and those are those little sticks they're like mm, they're like a cookie stick with, dipped in chocolate or strawberry or whatever flavor that you want. Uh, they're super delicious, but 1111 is very lucky in, you know, that part of the world. So that's why they have these massive sales and everything. It's pretty fun. Anyway, uh, I went on AliExpress and I told myself I wasn't going to, but I had already pre-ordered a painting. It's from a store that I've never heard of that doesn't really have a name. It's one of those like store and then a long string of numbers followed by store again or something like that. It's pretty silly, but they were doing pre-orders. So I paid like a dollar, dollar fifty or something a few days ago and I paid the rest yesterday. So that one is going to be really pretty. Hopefully it comes in good shape. I'm not going to be waiting on my hands for this one because I don't know the seller. But I contacted Moon Crescent because they sent me one of those special like, look, we're having a sale. Please come shop with us uh, messages. And I said, you know what? I've had a painting in my wish list for, I want to say, over a month with them. And it was only, what did I get it for? I'm trying to think now. I'll put the price here. The original price and then the total sale price. It was a pretty good deal. Um, but as you know, 11, 11 sale, it's just, it's not really that much off. So if you have the money to buy the painting at that time, then more power to you. And if you don't, then it's, I just messed up my checkerboard. <laughs> then it's not a, that big a deal. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to buy anything, but I went ahead and bought that painting and I'm, I'm just so, so excited to get it finally. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to do with all these paintings. <laughs> like, where I'm going to put them? So we'll see. Uh, but I really want to work on my customs and stuff like that. And I still have gifts for people to do. Ugh. When I get back to Ireland, I'm going to have my hands so full with Christmas stuff. 
I don't know how many videos I'm going to be making, to be honest, but I will do my best. Speaking of, I have been kind of a, a watcher lately. Um, I filmed three unboxings back to back one night because I got all three at the same time. And at this point, I think only one of them hasn't been released. But I'm trying to space them out a little bit because I'm going away. And I don't know what my setup is going to be like. I won't have my tripod, you know, this kind of stuff. So we'll see what I can do over there. I also know the internet isn't the best where I'm staying. So I don't know how or when I'll be uploading. Most likely from like Panera Wi-Fi or something like that. Starbucks Wi-Fi. Um, we'll see. But I'd like to make some videos while I'm over there. Just short vloggy type things. Um, so if you're interested in that, please give me a big thumbs up. Or comment down below. Because the comments are actually really really nice. I really appreciate you guys interacting with me. <laughs> Sometimes it can feel lonely on this end, if you know what I mean. I haven't found anybody else that I know in Ireland that likes to diamond paint. I mean, my bestie has diamond painted before, but she still hasn't started the one that I got her, and that was like the second diamond painting I ever bought on Wish of the cat I'll try to put a picture here just to make it a little more fun. But you know, it's like a cat and or two cats and a moon. I thought it was very fitting for her and her personality. She has two beautiful cat cats that are brothers. They both only have one eye, and it's the same eye. I think it's their left eye. Um, so they kind of look out for each other. <laughs> Sorry, lame joke. But um, anyhow, it's, it's nice to be able to talk to you guys about diamond painting. And that's why I'm in so many Facebook groups and stuff like that. Because, you know, I don't think anybody really understands the struggle of <laughs> this addiction. <laughs> um, and I think, to be honest, that the buying Buying the diamond paintings is just as fun as doing them. And that's what I need to watch out for. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to seriously stop. <laughs> I know I've said it before, but I really, really need to stop. But before I stop, <laughs> I just last night placed an order with New Frog. Now, I have been thinking about new frog since I first saw people unboxing new frog kits um, and I thought you know what it's not for me I'm not interested I don't like partials I don't like small paintings la la I've changed my mind I think it might be nice to have some smaller things to do between big paintings now this one isn't a big painting but the ones I'm about to do are pretty big um, and I wanted round ones because they're more mindless and for me I don't have to think about where I'm placing so yeah I got their buy five get one free or is it sorry about the dog buy one get one 20 get all of them 20% off it's something like that I'll correct myself Please, editing Rachel, help me. <laughs> um, but anyhow, I got a load of kits and I only paid like $28 or something. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're like. I got some really cute designs. What am I going to do next? Three, I think. $37.70. Um, so I got a bunch of kits and excited to see them. I just said that, but yeah, I, I would like to try them out because as I'm finding out, you, you really need to give a company a chance 
to to see what they're what they're like, you know. And sometimes they need more than one chance. Especially when they have evolved like say for instance Hula Can, they they were just like a normal cheapo diamond painting store. Let me drink. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So they were kind of like a cheap AliExpress store when I first started. And I heard from, I think it was like Ella from Kick and Cancer's Button Diamond Painting. I think I heard it on her channel that, you know, she was buying them and they were good quality and everything. So I bought I bought loads from who again, you know, to be honest, now that I look back on it, I realize that the quality wasn't there for me ever. Um, I bought two, I think I showed you in my, yeah, I showed it in my completed diamond paintings, which I will put in the eye up here. Um, that there was the kind of sunset scene and then there was the wolf and the girl. Those two are who can and they both have popping drills. Didn't realize what they were really when I first got the kits, but it's not as bad as like say this one. This one's really, really bad, but I didn't know what to do with it back then. So I just, kept going instead of choosing them very carefully and there were lots of holes now this one does not have drills with holes in them so whatever um I want to call it the oil you know the oil that sometimes the drills come oily that's their release oil I imagine for getting the drills out of the mold and they Sometimes they don't wash it properly, and so they have a residue. But also, if, if they don't use the right amount of resin and the other chemicals that go into them, if they don't get that, uh, what am I trying to say, that recipe right, I guess, then it allows holes to form, just like in any other resin project if you've ever worked with resin before. Sometimes people want it, but I get really creeped out. I don't know what that's called. Editing, Rachel, what is that phobia of the holes? I really, really, really find that unnerving. So, but I haven't had that problem with this painting. Wow, I'm really ranty this morning, I'm sorry. So sorry. Right, what will we go to next. How about P? What is B? P is 745, which isn't a bad year. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I was going to rant about work for a while, but I don't think I will. I'm not really comfortable sharing that kind of stuff, but let's just say it was a, a week of testing me. Um, this past week, people. Do you know, I don't remember when people got so rude. Like, I mean, adults. But lately, I've just realized how rude people can be. And, you know, the funny thing is, this, I'm not going to give any specifics of the situation because, yeah, I'm not. I'm, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to go there, but basically a gentleman came in and he wanted to sign up, but all he did was complain about the, the way things were. So I was just like, okay, um, we, things are different now. It's not the same people. He was like, well, things never change. And I was like, okay. First of all, 
if he has this attitude already, like he's going to be a handful. I really wish that I had had the foresight to just be like, if you don't like it, that if you don't like it and you know you won't like it, then we could do without your business. Maybe you should just keep going to the one that's further away and enjoy the drive an hour to go to the gym. But I didn't. And I've learned my lesson. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be saying something like that from now on. But basically every single time he comes in, and I work quite a lot, so I see him often. Every time he comes in, he's got something new to complain about. And it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm like nearly at my breaking point because it's always something that cannot be fixed by staff, right? It's something that needs to be fixed on a bigger scale by other people above me. And it's not that they don't want to, it's just that they are, their hands are tied. So we're doing the best that we can until some changes happen. I'm being as vague as I possibly can. So just in case. So anyhow, he just, he's always going, you know, oh, well, I know that it's not your fault, but, and I'm like, dude, I don't want to hear you complain every day about the same stuff to me. Try not to use choice language here, but you know, I don't want, I don't want to hear this every day. You are a ball of negativity. I don't need this, you know? So when I started that job, I was really kind of optimistic and I look forward to it and everything. And now it's kind of like, what is this dude? And it's not just this dude. It's a few people that have a grudge or, you know, they, they're just negative. Now I realize I kind of gave myself a pep talk while I was cleaning <laughs> and stuff um, that it's, it's not my job to change his negativity. Like, I feel like that's initially what my brain wants me to do because I'm very empathetic and it hurts me to see other people hurting or, you know, complaining or whatever. And I'm like, how can I make this situation better? But now I realize that this dude is just, it's unfixable. What, what his issue is, is something that I cannot fix. So now I just have to deal with him in a different way. Does that make sense? Do you know anybody like that? Like, you could have a friend like that. Um, you could have coworkers like that. I'm really sorry if I just bumped you there. This tripod setup is kind of weird. Sorry. Um, so yeah, anyway, I don't like, like Leisha says, I don't need that negativity in my life. I'm just, I'm just tired of it. So <laughs> what are we going to do next? Let's do the L's. L's are 3078. So, yeah. So that's work. Fun, fun. Um, but I only have like a really short day today. I said L, didn't I? I have a short day today, two to seven. And then there's no L's there. Go up. And then I work the evening tomorrow. I'm off on Wednesday. I think I work evening on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So that's great because all my shifts will be similar and I can, hang on, two seconds. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I'm back now. Let's zoom in. Oops. Good stuff. Sorry about the shaking. I'll just do one more second. Ooh, there we go. Okay. So a little time has passed. Let's go 
in the chair. Hi, Luna. So, uh, my husband woke up. So that gave me the opportunity to change and get some more coffee and chat about what we're going to do today. I was on the symbol L. That's right. So, yeah, that was good. Uh, now he's off and I am waiting for the postman. I have a wish order coming, I think. And I have an order from AZQSD yet to come. That should be here today. And I also have a diamond painting pen from a guy called Richard in the UK. And hopefully that'll get here today. I have been waiting a very long time for this. So I'm super excited just to switch it up a little bit and get something more fancy because I deserve it. Just kidding. Um, yeah, so I don't know what I was talking about. I think I was talking about work and stuff. And, you know, all I can say is I am lucky to have a job. I have been in situations where I wasn't able to get a job because of the area I live in and the qualifications I have and things like that. I suppose I should say the qualifications I don't have here because my qualifications from the States don't translate. But that's another story for another day, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's all the updates that I have. Uh, and that was a lot longer than I expected them to go on for. So if you were here for the tag, I'm so sorry that you had to sit through that. Maybe I'll put a timestamp down below just in case you're like, what is she rabbiting on about? Get to the tag. But I know you all aren't like that. So thank you very much for your patience. Now, make my screen come on. Come on, screen. Um, and while we wait for that to start up, which might take a minute. Come on now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here goes. This is a throwback tag. I found this uh, by just Googling throwback tag and it was the first result. It's from Tumblr. I think it's called tagquestions.tumblr.com. So I don't take any credit for the questions. And I'm pretty sure this is the one that gone off my meds and Mrs. Crochet and Coffee did in their videos. Hi, Luna. Go lay down. So I'm gonna start. The first question is, what year were you born in? I was born in 1987. That tells you how old I am. <laughs> I was trying to put that off for a while, but yeah, 1987 was the year. It's all right, dog. Uh, number two, do you have any pictures of yourself from when you were younger? If you do, show them. Um, I don't have any childhood albums here with me right now, but I am going back to my childhood home this week. Oh my God. Um, so maybe I can show you then, but until then I have some pictures of when I was a teenager, so I could put them here. Number three, what TV shows did you grow up watching? Let me get another color and then, <laughs> and, I'll, and then I'll answer that one. Let's see, what color do I want? I'll go for R, because they're the easiest for me to see right now. 741. There we go. So what TV shows did you grow up watching? I grew up watching things like... Um, Blue's Clues, Hey Arnold, 
There were a lot of Disney movies and shows back then. It was their, their own channel, Nickelodeon stuff. Um, Doug was one of my favorites. Um, yeah, there were lots of really good shows. There were Rugrats were on. They kind of had this lineup, and it was just super predictable. I do remember not liking Ed, Ed, and Eddie. If you remember that one, I didn't like that one. And I really thought that Ren and Stimpy was creepy. Now I appreciate it. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, whoa, that's really creepy. Oh, they had that, um, what was that one with the monsters? Oh, Ah, uh, Real Monsters. Um, that was a really good one. It was like Ren and Stimpy Light, I guess. Um, oops. Misplaced that one. Um, so yeah, I grew up with those shows, and then I remember when I, I remember when I watched, um, all that for the first time, it was with, at my cousin's house, because they were, they were older than me, I think they were like, Kathleen was two years older, and Pauline was one year older than me, and so we would watch that, and... I think a lot of it flew over my head because I was just a little too young. I think I was like nine or eight or nine. But I actually love that show. It was so funny. So yeah, that was the age. I think that was like the best age of television. Like the 90s were really, really fun. And early 2000s, really great TV shows. Um, when I was a teenager... I was watching like Buffy, Angel, um, stuff like that. And then when, when I got a little bit older, I started watching anime and I was obsessed until, until college. I think I was, I was watching anime right into up and through college, but then I kind of stopped after about maybe 2005 or six. It just wasn't as good. So yeah, but that's that's a whole other. I'm sure I could do a whole tag on anime. To be honest, I might do that some someday. But we'll see. If you would like to talk about anime, <laughs> maybe we could do that out of YouTube because it's kind of embarrassing now to me. Um, next question: What did you want to be when you grew up, and do you still want to be that? When I was growing up, I wanted to be a vet because I thought that vets got to spend time with animals all the time. And I thought it, I had like that puppies and kittens kind of outlook on it, not realizing that you're always dealing with sick animals. <laughs> um, no, I did not become a vet. My grandmother predicted that I'd become a teacher. And, and to be honest, I fought it for a really long time. I thought, no, I'm not going to do what you want me to do because I was a very difficult person as a teenager. Um, God bless you, Ganny. <laughs> but um, I did not become a vet because obviously I could not handle the emotional roller coaster, especially having to put down some of my pets and stuff in the past. It's just too hard. And I'd, I'd create an attachment, no bother, and... No, but I did become a teacher. I used to play like I was in school. Did you, oh, there's a tag on that one. Did you ever play like you were at school? I used to get like a, um, whatchamacallit, a lunchbox and a notepad and a book backpack. I must call it a book bag. Um, I used to get all those things, and then I'd go up to my grandmother and be like, can we play school? <laughs> um, that's a really good memory I have when I was a kid. But, yeah, I became a teacher in the end, and I teach English as a second language. But I don't do it as a full-time job right now because I don't have qualifications for Ireland Mainstream schools, I could teach English literature or writing or whatever, but 
you have to have a specific degree that's from this country. So that's been put on hold. But someday, someday when I, when I get the opportunity, I will probably go back to teaching full-time. But it is, it is a struggle of the system. So, oops, my screen went blank. Hello. So, five. Show a video of yourself when you were younger. Unfortunately, I don't have any video, digital video. I have VHS, but I don't have it here. I moved away from home and out of the country when I was 23. And so I don't have any of that stuff. So apologies, but... I cannot show you any video of me when I was younger. Um, next, what were your favorite toys to play with? I'm trying to remember now. I know I had Barbies, but I used to like, I, did, I didn't like Barbie. Um, I thought they were kind of dumb. I think my favorite thing to do and play with was actually like outdoor stuff. So I'd go rollerblading a lot. Rollerblading was my favorite thing. We would take the boom box and go up to my neighbor's driveway because they actually had a paved driveway. And I lived out in the country. So we had, we had only a gravel road and they had a paved one. And I mean, it wasn't a big one or anything, but it was like a U in front of their house. Oh, popping drills, come on. So yeah, there's just like a, a U shape or a crescent shape. And I would go there with my, you know, friends, the neighborhood kids. We would rollerblade until the sun went down, you know, that was like our favorite thing to do. So I have to say rollerblading. And when we couldn't do it outside, we'd go to the, to the roller skating rink. So much fun. I kind of miss that. I wish, I wish that there was something like that here. Because, I mean, I know that adults do roller derby and stuff like that. I would be like the kind of person that would get into that for sure if that was near me. Again, I'm sorry if I'm moving you. I'm, I just realized I shook a lot. <laughs> Uh, okay. Next question, sorry, is what's the most embarrassing thing that you can remember doing? I know there was something embarrassing that I did. Do you know what? Actually, there is a, <laughs> this is really funny to think about now as an adult. When I was about... 12 or 13 I think just hitting puberty I Luna sorry um edit this part out but I'm not going to press the pause button even in focus okay sorry the dog kind of went ballistic there for a second <laughs> at nothing uh, surprise surprise so my embarrassing story when I was 12 or 13 neighborhood kid and me were up to no good so we went into my grandfather's truck and he smoked at the time so we went into his truck and we tried to light up the <laughs> crispy ends of cigarettes and smoke them thinking that we were cool. But we did this in my grandparents' driveway while they were home. It was so stupid. <laughs> um, we got caught and my grandmother later told me that she had to really try not to laugh because we were so obvious. Um, and honestly, after that, she, she, she raised me really well. I have to commend her because 
<laughs> I wouldn't touch a cigarette after that until I was, I don't remember how old I was. I think it was in college when I tried smoking for the first time. I didn't like it then. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that was really embarrassing. I remember being mortified trying to get out of it and she was like you cannot you literally cannot you were in the truck smoking go to your room <laughs> so yep that was that was I don't think I lived that down for like a year or something <laughs> okay the next thing is read something you wrote when you were in kindergarten I don't even know if anything like that exists, to be honest. I moved around a lot. So, sorry, I don't have anything like that. Three songs you love to listen to as a child. Three songs I love to listen to. Oh, God. Um, I don't really recall songs unless you count Disney, I guess. Um... <clears throat> excuse me, child is kind of a broad spectrum. But when I got interested in music that wasn't in Disney movies, I think it was like mainstream pop and stuff. So I got into the Spice Girls, which my grandmother did not like. I, of course, did not understand the innuendo in the songs. So to me, it was just fun, catchy, dancey music. To her, it was like, what are you, what are you singing about? <laughs> I know what you're singing about, but why are you singing it? Um, I like Destiny's Child and Usher. And then I got into Backstreet Boys. They were huge. And then that kind of morphed into alt alternative rock or like um, mainstream rock. At the time they called it alternative rock, but now I think that that has a different, it kind of has a different meaning. Okay, sorry about that guys. So uh, I just got a call from work. <laughs> uh, now, where was I? I was going to do ampersand, the at symbol, or not at, what am I saying? 780 and symbol. This one. -da. Okay. So yeah. Destiny's Child, Backstreet Boys, all them. Um, and then alt-rock. And that turned into metal. <laughs> now, now I just listen to like indie rock and light rock. And a lot of throwback stuff. Because I'm getting old. They say that the music that you listen to when you're a teenager is kind of the music that sticks with you. I think that that kind of morphs into your early 20s and then that's the music that you're going you're gonna to like for a very long time. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my formative years of music. Kind of embarrassing, but sure. Uh, oh, I have to interrupt this tag. I think the mailman is going to come soon, so there might be another jump cut. I'm really sorry about all these cuts today, guys. So number 10, what was one funny thing you dressed up as for, <laughs> dressed up for Halloween as when you were younger? They really butchered the grammar in that. Um, hmm. What's a funny thing that I dressed up for Halloween? As. I'm trying to think. I don't think there really was anything too funny. Because I stopped trick-or-treating when I was quite young. Uh, I don't know. I might have to come back to that. But I, I honestly don't think that I did anything funny as such. Tell a funny story of something you remember happening when you were young. I remember one day we lived in like this kind of cul-de-sac residential area and we had 
a, like an acre or two of property by the lake. So it had like a dock and everything and we'd go fishing there and it wasn't too far away from our house at the time. So we were just there and it didn't, it didn't have its own property or anything like that. It was just literally a little slice sliver of land um, <clears throat> that we did nothing with. And one day my friends and I biked over there and again, just up to no good because back then we didn't have internet and we didn't really we watched tv but it wasn't your your parents would kick you out of the house they'd be like get out of the house <laughs> so um we would get in trouble a lot because we were always out and about I think kids are really missing out these days but um anyway I was out cycling with this like neighborhood gang and we went over to the docks and stuff, and I was, I guess I was dared to look down into the water. They were trying to make a story about some monster or Loch Ness or something. And anyway, they dared me to look down into the water over the railing. And what happened? My glasses fell off into the water, just bloop, started screaming. I'm being like, oh my God, they're going to kill me. It's so much, it's so expensive to get glasses and la la la. I couldn't see anything without them either. So anyway, a friend had to cycle to my grandparents' house, tell them that what happened. Quick, Rachel needs you over at the thing. And they thought I was like dying or something. And they come and they're like, why would you do this? You know how gravity works. I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize. But apparently the water there, you know, it would have been really salty and full of mud. So there was no way I was going to be able to find them. Even if I had like snorkeling gear or something, there's just no way. They were not coming back. So the lake took my glasses and I had to go without glasses for like two days and I had a really terrible headache the whole time and I learned not to do that again so that was I mean I don't know if that was funny to you but it was funny to me later on <laughs> 12 are there any special things you kept from when you were a child hmm I don't think I have anything here I'll try to include them into a vloggy type video later on because all like I said all that stuff is back in my childhood house I keep it there because I live abroad and it's just there's too much and someday we'll have to take ownership of all that stuff or get rid of it and that's kind of what we're kind of some of the stuff we're going to be doing while we're over there me and my husband but it's just a lot to do um, so yeah, if, if I can find something, I'll share it with you. <laughs> What's the next thing? Was there something weird you used to do as a child? Hmm. I never bit my, th my nails or sucked my thumb or anything like that. I'm trying to think if there was something unique or different that I did pretty sure that I'm on like the autism spectrum uh not to scare anybody or anything but yeah I always found it difficult to socialize and it's it's really difficult to explain and I've never been diagnosed but I used to and sometimes still do pay attention more to people's body language, their mouth movements, and other things like that. And I cannot look at them in the eye uh, when they're talking. It's really weird. And, well, I do, I do now because I do it consciously. <laughs> but um, I used to, I used to mimic or not mimic, how do, I, how do I explain this? I used to copy people's mouths. I think 
I think there, I've seen other people do this where they're listening so intensely that their mouth moves while the other person is talking. That's a weird thing that I did. I do not do that anymore. Um, what is something, oh, what's the scariest thing that you remember happening to you when you were younger? I'm going to have to think about that for a minute. Let me get another color. Let's, I keep popping down these drills. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go for the bright ones. So how about M? M is 726. Okay. I think the dog is jumpy because she knows that the mailman comes around this time. I'm expecting him in 10 minutes or less. So the scariest thing that I remember happening to me as a child, well, I don't want to get too much into it because there's a lot of history there um, that I'm not exactly comfortable sharing online. But like, yeah. Let's just skip that question because that's not, that's not fun to think about. Um, how is the world, oh, this is the last one, how is the world now different from how it was like <laughs> this person? <laughs> how is the world different now from how it was when you were a child? Well, I know that we have unlimited access to internet all the time and that was something that was a luxury and completely almost completely unattainable when I was a child. I grew up in the dial-up era and my grandparents would not upgrade to um, what was it called back then? I can't remember now. But, you know, they used to have this, the simultaneous service so that you were using, it was faster internet, but it really wasn't that fast at all. Um, and you wouldn't have to use your phone line to connect. So, sorry, one second. So we used to have, we had dial up until I went to college, then they got... <laughs> I guess then they got into computers. I don't know. But they used to yell at me all the time to get off the, get off the computer. Get off the internet. Um, so they got that service when I left, which was not helpful. But anyway, um, that's different. That's obviously different. Uh, when I was a kid, you were allowed to roam neighborhoods and, like, nobody cared like it was expected that you were going to be out and about you know that one is a bad one so you respected all of the adults around you and you listened to them and adults had no problem telling you to do anything you know what I mean like they'd be like get off my lawn a good example but they'd also be like cop on to yourself um don't be a fool i'll call your parents you know that kind of stuff um and they would because they lived in the neighborhood and like people knew each other and socialized with each other back then um not just cooped up in their houses you know um like now i i rarely talk to my neighbors is you don't you don't have to anymore. You're not like, you know, you're not isolated in the same way. We have a global community, obviously. I mean, I wouldn't be talking to you right now if it wasn't. So yeah, that's that's hugely different now. So guys, I think I'm gonna have to say goodbye for now. And get ready for the mailman to show up. And then hopefully I'll have a few more unboxings that I can film. Oh, he's here. So I'll have a few more unboxings to film then. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching me diamond paint, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.